I'm joined now by Dr. Drew Ramsey. He's a psychiatrist at Columbia University. Now, you brought a fork with you. This is probably one of the most <laughs> underutilized and important tools in psychiatry. And really? That, and that's one of the reasons that we're here is to talk to a psychiatrist about food, uh -huh. how to incorporate food into your clinical practice, and all the new research coming out on something that we know, which is that food has a huge, huge impact on our patients' brain health. Do you think this is something that people think about when they think of their brain health? Uh, no, I don't think people do. A lot of psychiatrists, though, do. A lot of psychiatrists ask about food, and we're uniquely positioned because the brain both burns most of your f fuel, yeah. and, and also we're experts in behavioral change. And so I think we need to step up to the plate a little bit more in psychiatry and help our patients change how they eat. This is going to have a huge impact on their psychiatric outcomes. I hear one of your favorite foods is kale. I, I am a little crazy about the kale, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, Why? So kale, because kale teaches us a set of lessons about food. Okay. Kale teaches us that we want to look for foods that are nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. So that's more bang for your buck. You get more nutrients per calorie and kale tops those charts. But real quickly, let's just think 33 calories in a yeah. cup of kale. You get over 600% of your vitamin K, 200% of your vitamin A, over 130% of your vitamin C, right. plus fiber, the most absorbable form of calcium on the planet, mm -hmm. folate, iron, big list of brain nutrients there. So that's rule one, nutrient mm -hmm. density. Rule two okay. is flexibility. I mean, with kale, you can do anything. Kale salad, kale chip. Cook with it, yep. Kale hito. Kale, kale hito, love kale, it. Kale pesto. <laughs> I mean, so there's an endless way to incorporate that into your diet. Mm -hmm. And then it's available. Everybody can afford kale. It's, a, it's easy to grow anywhere in the world. Uh, we have right. people celebrating kale and National Kale Day in, in Kenya, in uh, Denmark. Really? So it's, it's sort of exciting here. What day is National Kale Day? So National Kale Day is going to be October the 6th this year. Okay, that's great. What other foods are good for brain health? So the, the foods that we really try to emphasize and help clinicians prescribe uh, are, are seafood, because those are going to be the top sources of omega-3 fats and specifically the bivalves, uh, oysters, mussels, and clams. We get a lot okay. of B12. We're really helping patients add more plants into their diet. We want mm. them to eat the rainbow, mm. get all these great phytonutrients, plus keep the microbiome healthy, which we know is, you know, that's a buzzword in mental yeah. health these days. Uh, we want to help people with uh, plant-based sources of protein like nuts and beans. And then there are a lot of great little tricks, spices like turmeric, which has a good signal that it actually increases some growth factors in the brain. Really? Uh, we want people to getting more uh, swaps in their beverages. We see, for example, 25% of the calories in teenage boys come from soda. So we've got to change that if we're going to change the mental health of our adolescent population. Definitely. And how do you plan to go about that? I mean, you have a workshop here at yeah. the convention. And uh, what is it called? Uh, the Food in the Brain. It's, okay. it's this Monday at 9. Right. And so in addition to that, I get to work with a great set of uh, clinicians and researchers, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Emily Deans uh, and uh, Dr. Laura Lachance, who's a, a chief resident at University of Toronto, actually. Oh, and so go. we've worked together and developed a brain food manual, which is a manualized psychotherapy to help mental health clinicians talk about food. And then also the brain food scale, which we're going to be talking about for the first time. And this is a specific scale looking at brain essential nutrients and then ranking foods. What are you personally looking forward to uh, over the next few days here? Well I get to feed dark chocolate to a lot of psychiatrists <laughs> and so that, that's very exciting. They'll be very thankful for uh, that. But I, I always look forward to catching up with colleagues that I haven't seen for several years. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a lot of fun to present at the APA. Um, it, it's also just great to be with colleagues and to go over the data and kind of put our heads together. Yeah. So I really just enjoy the collaboration and the, the fun presenting and then it's, it's a nice time for all of us to get together yeah. and really cohesive as a profession. That's great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>